Greetings, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with Ask Dave episode number 267. How time flies. This is another stay at home special, and today is a special day for many people. It is Easter in the Western world. The Easter, uh, for those who wonder how the date is picked, is the Sunday after the um, full moon after the spring solstice. Now, on the uh, Eastern Church, it's the Sunday closest to the full moon. Well, the full moon was Wednesday, so I'm not sure if it was last week or this week. But uh, welcome to all of you worldwide. And I'm doing a video every day just during this uh, quarantine period, so we all have a little bit of something ham radio to look forward to. What I'm doing today, you all know that I'm putting a new computer together. I had it kind of working with the substitute uh, i3 processor instead of the Core i7. And um, I committed the unpardonable sin. I left the uh, pin bed for the processor exposed while I was doing something and I managed to ruin it. So I've got a new motherboard on order. Nobody's fault but my own. Uh, there are videos on how you can uh, fix that uh, pin board, but uh, my hands shake too much to do that. You need to have a brain surgeon's hands and a microscope uh, in order to see how that's done. I have the microscope, uh, but I don't have the brain surgeon's hands. They shake too bad. Well, let's get down to business. What we're going to do is the new computer will be ready this week uh, with the new motherboard, and I'm going to have to set it up for FT8 and for um, uh, PSK31. Okay, now to do that, um, it's very easy with the ICOM 7300. You just attach a USB cable from your computer to the radio. Um, but there are several settings that you need to put in on the radio to make things a little bit easier. And there is a driver on the computer. Now, the driver, unfortunately, is only for Windows. Now, uh, it needs a driver that will recognize the chip that is in the uh, radio. And I'll give you a little bit more information on that later this week when we do the a video that talks about getting the computer all set up for that. Uh, unfortunately, ICOM's driver is only Windows. Uh, that's uh, sad. Uh, maybe those of you out there with Macs or uh, Linux machines can comment on this about how you were able to connect that USB cable to the ICOM and make it work. So what I'm going to do is show uh, a couple charts uh, and we'll walk through the menu settings that we have to go through to kind of tweak things to get it all set up. And then next, uh, or this coming week, we'll do the other part. We'll install the driver in the new computer and get everything working there with WSJTX and with uh, PSK31. So, into the charts we go. In this video, we're setting up the radio to work over the USB port for FT8, digital modes, ready uh, with FL Digi, with uh, WSJTX, and so on. And I'm going to just walk you through the things that you have to do. Now, this particular diagram, which comes from the extended owner's manual, uh, shows the way to do it for ready, but you use exactly the same connection to do it uh, with the USB uh, functions there. So we're going to walk through that. Uh, first of all, here is the uh, cable that you want to use. It's a standard what's called AB cable. This was the very first type of USB cable that came out when USB came out. And this is the same kind of cable that is used to this day by HP printers. So if you get that cable you're fine. Now this picture shows the B end of the cable and we're going to put this into the back of the radio. We will, however, not insert the A end, the other end of the cable, which looks like a standard USB cable, into the computer until after we uh, install the driver. Now, as it turns out, 
Uh, I have not yet done that in my new computer, so I'm going to record that when I get the new computer working again. Now this single cable, it's like two cables in one uh, in terms of function. Uh, it works as a control cable for the radio so that the software can control things like a frequency and modes and stuff like that. It also acts like an audio cable in the sense that the IC7300 has a built-in sound card. So this is the cable connecting it to the sound card. So it will look to your computer as though it's an external sound card. So you're doing double duty with this, both control and audio. This is the port in the back of the IC7300 there, and you can see the little corners cut off uh, down over here and here. So make sure you put it in uh, the right way. It only goes in one way and will look like this when you've got it in there. Okay, now let's look at what happens on the screen. Press menu on the screen and this is what you will see. Now we want to go over here and uh, touch set. And when we do that we get one of two pages and the thing we are interested in is the connectors. Okay, now we'll press that and it will bring up a sub-menu. So go ahead and press that. Now here is the menu. There are four pages of the connectors menu. Now the accessory slash USB. Note, note, I, I should pause here to note that there's another output on the back of the radio called accessory. And you can use that if you want. Uh, but I, it's just so much easier to do the USB. So we'll use the USB. And we want to select the output. Do we want audio frequencies or do we want the uh, IF, which you would use perhaps for a uh, SDR radio? Not very broadband, but and it can be done. We're going to use this for audio frequencies. The audio frequency output level is from the radio to the computer. We'll, we'll leave it at 50%. That seems to work okay. Now we're going to look at this in section 12 of the um, full manual. It's got all of the data in there. I suggest you actually take that disc uh, that came with the radio down to uh, uh, Office Depot or Office Max or to uh, whatever, Staples and have them print the manual for you double-sided in color because it is in color and it's a lot easier to read and we're going to be looking at uh, these now I'm on page 12-7 of the manual and when we look at this one down here USB AF squelch we want that to be always open regardless of the transceiver squelch level so you can actually squelch the transceiver so you don't hear it, but you'll still get the uh, audio out to the software on the radio. The next one, the AF beep speech output, the default is off, which means that the beep and speech audio are not output from the accessory and USB. We're going to leave this off. Now the next one, the IF output level, um, sets the IF output range of the accessory and USB and we're not outputting that so we really don't care just leave it at the 50 percent it's at. Uh, the uh, accessory modulation level just leave it where it is because we're not using the accessory port here we're using the USB. Now the USB mod level sets the modulation input level of the USB and I found in my case I needed to turn that up a bit to get uh, comfortable audio levels all the way through. I put mine up there uh, to uh, 74%. You can do that just by selecting it and then going up. The data off mod selects the connector to input the modulation signal, get this, when the data mode is off. Okay, when data mode is off, we want to use the microphone, okay? Use the microphone for our input. So that's why it says mic there. Now data mod selects the connector to input the modulation signal when the data mode is on. Well, we want to use the USB. Okay. Now the external keypad we're, we're not interested in uh, here. Uh, we're going to go all the way down to CIV. 
Now, when we select CIV, we'll find it has some submenus of its own. So select CIV, and now see up at the top of the screen, uh, this is the CIV submenu. Okay, the CIV baud rate, just leave it on auto. Let the uh, radio and the computer negotiate uh, that. The CIV address you can leave at 94H. Probably better do that because uh, the software is expecting that port. CIV transceive turns the transceive function on and off and on. The status is output. When you change a setting on the transceiver, the same change is automatically set on the other connected items. Well, this is good because if you change the a frequency on the transceiver directly, you want WSJTX or whatever to pick that up. So you want to leave that on. The remote transceive address, you can leave it 00, zero hex right there. Okay, and let's keep going now to the, the second menu for the CIV. The CIV output for the antenna, you can leave that off. You don't need to worry about that. CIV USB port. We want link to remote uh, because that means that the USB and the remote CIV ports are connected. It doesn't, doesn't much matter. Now, uh, the other two right there are um, uh, grayed out because they're uh, not available to us as choices because of previous choices we've already made. So if you now press the go back down here, we go back to where we were, and we were doing the, the CIV, and uh, the ready decode we're not going to mess with in here because we're going to let the software do the ready decode. There is a way if you want to play with it to let the, the radio do the ready decode and send the answers out to the computer, but that's not the way the computer software works, so we won't worry about that. So we go back up here to connectors, uh, four out of four, and uh, the USB send keying. Um, I happen to be, uh, we, if you press on the USB send keying, uh, you get, I use DTR because that's what I selected, uh, I think, in uh, WSJTX. And that's what causes the, um, to put, it puts the, the rig into transmit. USB keying CW, I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, if I were to send CW, it would be AFSK rather than pure CW. The same with the USB keying for RIDI. Uh, you can use the radio itself to do true FSK if you want to. Now inhibit the timer at the USB connection. Um, you see, this is a keying signal when using a PC with the old USB driver installed and an IAC 7300 through the USB cable. Turning on the timer prevents an unintentional sending of the send or keying signal when and there are a list of conditions such as starting up the PC while connected to the IC 7300. So we've got that inhibit turned on. Okay, so that's the part that we need to set on the radio. And if you've been having some trouble or if you think one of those settings is maybe a little bit wrong, please put something in the comments. Uh, when you put something in the comments, please put in there what worked best for you. And we'll try and get this. This is the reference radio. And uh, this connection to the PC, our reference PC is going to have to be a Windows 10 machine, I'm sorry. Um, but will show how we can do it. Now the driver was made in 2018, so it's a couple years old. They haven't released anything since. They haven't released any firmware since for the radio. So I think everything about the radio is very stable at this point in time. So uh, I, I just want to again wish you a happy Easter. Um, we all celebrate that holiday a little differently. For some of us, it has religious significance. For some of us, it just has the significance of the renewal of spring, of, of things starting again, things coming to life again. Uh, my wife and I took a little drive in the country today to get out of the house, 
and saw farmers' fields plowed, ready for planting, and green pastures and everything. And if we go down, we're at 7,000 feet here, but you go down around 5,000 feet, and the trees are already turning green, and it's just a beautiful time of year. So as you're sitting in quarantine, get on the air and have some fun. Seek out those around you who need your help, whether it be financial or um, just somebody to talk to on the phone. Uh, this is a time for us uh, as a nation and as a world uh, to reach out and help our fellow human beings. Well, I guess I've got to toot my own horn, don't I? Here it is. <gasps> and so please go to dkassler.com support. Look for ways that you can support this channel financially. Please click like and please subscribe. <gasps> there we go. Until we next meet, 73.